Hi, we're Tom and Autumn. Just before the pandemic started, Tom and I quit our jobs to travel the world. However, less than a month after booking our one-way tickets to India, the whole world shut down. For a while. We chose to then spend our life savings on a little house in East London that needed a lot of work. We're now 16 months in, and after fixing up a room to live in and then completing the whole of the loft, we are now focusing our efforts downstairs. We've got the living room, dining room, and hallways completely plastered, and we are now on the final bit of structural work, installing the back doors. Last week, we cleared out the kitchen and installed the new lintel, and today we get to do the fun part, putting the back doors in. If you're keen to watch our house come together, be sure to hit the subscribe button to follow along. It is two weeks later. Feels like I've not been doing this for a very long time, but after two enjoyable weeks of seeing friends, eating good food, and just generally taking a mini break from the house, we are back. Despite the fact that we moved the entire kitchen back in here, it turned out not to be very useful. We haven't actually been cooking that much because Turns out we absolutely have a mouse infestation. There was one mouse in here once, one big mouse, and in the past couple of days we've caught five baby mouse, mice. So, safe to say we have a big problem. Luckily, it's not been a big problem for long because tomorrow we will be taking the kitchen out and we'll be able to work out exactly where they're coming from. But uh, just to confirm, when I say caught baby mice, obviously we used a humane trap and we took them to a park, nowhere near any houses, to free all of them. And we kick off by doing exactly what we did two weeks ago and having to take everything out of the kitchen, except this time we mean everything. Now you've already seen us empty it once, so I'll give you the very, very satisfying one second reveal of this is what it looks like right now, and this is what you managed to skip straight to. So next on task is we're gonna start screening the floor. So currently in our kitchen we have a thin concrete base um, but obviously, like all Victorian houses, or our one in particular, it's wonky. So we're just going to level that floor out. And the plan is to screed it, uh, wait however long it needs to take to dry, and then we're going to do a floating floor with insulation and chipboard on top. Uh, so we're just raising the floor slightly. There's more of a flush finish from the dining room into the kitchen. So the day has finally come. The kitchen has been completely removed, and uh, it is time that we level this floor. It's fine. We're fine. You doing there? Just trying to make lunch with you. <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting couple of days. Look at that sink. So hygienic. Oh, this is awful. I don't know what's worse, this or mice. Definitely mice. Definitely. So next on the list for the kitchen renovation is to install plug sockets in new locations. So we're thinking about two plug sockets on one wall with an additional one, um, additional isolator for the oven. And then on the other wall, there'll be one hidden in the pantry cupboard, one on the counter, and then one underneath the sink that will be for the dishwasher. So what we're using here is a angle grinder, a spirit level, and a metal box just to cut out a shape and then we'll be able to insert them into the wall. So blocked out the room, even though our house is completely dusty, 
it's just better to be a little bit safer with our lovely new plastered walls. And here we have it, our two plug sockets there. The wire's gonna go along here into the other one. We've also now gonna have the switch socket inside the wall and that'll be hidden once it's been plastered. And then over here is the final one that'll be on the counter. There'll be another one inside the pantry cupboard and then there is one down here. So in preparation for the door, we also need to remove the old copper pipe that was the, I suppose, water supply into the sink. Last week, Martin reconnected that. So right now we have a temporary solution of wire coming through here and it kind of goes down into the sink. Um, we will be having it coming through this one and because there's a little bit of a void at the back of the kitchen, it will always be hidden. But that just now means removing this copper going all the way around the door. And here you can see the lead and more pipe work. So we've got my pipe cutter. Let's get removing the copper pipe. So this is what we're currently dealing with. Uh, we've moved our fridge into here and this is our prep station. All of the countertops are still actually attached to the walls in the kitchen. I don't know if you can see just over there, but we're actually just using it to hold tools while we work in there, which is super useful. But it does mean that we don't have much prep space, uh, but we're making it work. Got <laughs> plaster in the way, but no worries, there is a walkway. And then here is my little cook station. So all of the cooking utensils or uh, cooking equipment that we have available is one microwave, one air fryer, and one toaster. But I'm confident we'll be able to make some great meals with this. And uh, here is my washer and dryer, both completely out of action. We are currently using the laundrette. And kitchen stuff that is not essential over the next few days. And then we've got a little bit of storage over here. And by storage, I mean a dumping ground for food, which our mice can easily get to. So my hopes of um, not getting sick in the next week are low. <laughs> That is because all of our uh, nicely sealed kitchen cupboards fell apart when we took them off the wall. So uh, this is what we're working with. Anyway, I kicked things off by having a Google of meals that you don't need an oven for, but to be honest, it wasn't very helpful. It literally just came back with salads and um, like weird ways of cooking, like explaining that you could cook pasta in a kettle or something like that. I was just like, I don't need weird ways of cooking. So obviously with the microwave we can reheat, we can even cook pasta in the microwave. Um, the air fryer, it's basically an oven and a fryer, a crisper, a baker, whatever. And then the toaster's good for toast and bagels and anything that we might want um, like that. So basically the only thing we don't have is a hob. Um, so in terms of actually frying up stuff, that's kind of our one limitation. So all I did was just have a think of meals that I like or things that I fancied eating, knowing what was off limits. So stuff like noodles was basically off limits because stir fried veg I couldn't make. I mean, I could roast it up in the um, air fryer, but the sauce and stuff, I don't know. I didn't want to overcomplicate it. So because so many of you are either doing a renovation or thinking of doing a renovation, love a bit of renovation reality, I thought I would show you what we cook because you might find pretty soon you are kitchen this and you need to make things work. I'm basically just making, I don't know if any of you live in London and have been to a pill pill before, but it's basically just a falafel bowl with couscous and minty salad, um, some bits. So I'm basically gonna make kind of a big bowl of each and then we can just eat that over the next two or three days for lunch. So first up, I've just got these gosh falafels and I'm just gonna chuck them in the air fryer. While that cooks, I'm gonna boil up some water for some couscous. And uh, that does involve trying to walk the plank in the kitchen while the cement below dries. Not cement, screed.
And then you just stick the lid on and shake the whole thing up. And stare at your beautifully plastered ceiling while you do. And then just in an almost empty tahini jar, I'm gonna add the rest of the lemon, some olive oil, some pepper, and a little bit of mustard. And I'll just stir that all up. Then once your kale's boiled, I just get a bowl. I also bought it some of this red cabbage that's already sliced. A few of these chili things that I'm obsessed with. And then just drizzle with the sauce you made up. A tasty little Mediterranean bowl and uh, we'll probably have that for two lunches now. The day has finally come. We are putting the back doors in. You might already know this, we ordered these back doors I believe over three months ago, there was an 11 week waiting list, which then just kept extending uh, due to manufacturing issues and a bunch of stuff going on. And they did come last week. If you saw last week's video, we installed the lintel, which was interesting endeavor, uh, but we did manage to get it in. And it's also been over a week since the last clips that you just watched in this video. So the screen is now dry. We we're able to walk on it and that means that the door can go in. I know we're still a very long time off of having the kitchen done, but even just seeing the kitchen with the old back door open and seeing how much light comes in means it's been something that Tom and I have been really, really excited for for a very long time. So once it was finally delivered, we kind of shuffled our priorities around and just made sure getting that back door in was next up on the list. Because the back doors that we're installing are much bigger than the back door that is originally there, uh, that was why we had to put in the lentil in the first place, but it also means that job one is going to be removing the bricks and getting the hole for the back door to the right size. And uh, from the drilling and work that I'm hearing already, I think Martin and Tom might have already started. have it the opening for the door is now complete so we're actually quite lucky we only had to cut one side because before we had a single door there um, and when we've done the measurements we have exactly got 1400 now which is perfect for our doors the saves us on cutting again first uh, error of the day we realized it's upside down So we basically just packed out the bottom so that the top of the doors, you can't really see with this lighting, but it's basically exactly up against the lintel. You can already see all the extra sun coming in. The kitchen has always been super dark because the back door didn't have any glass and so it literally just blocked off any light, basically. The only chance of light we had was in that little window in the side and um, it never sees the sun. So the kitchen has always been a super dark room, but uh, yeah, seeing the sun poke through is so beautiful. I just can't wait to see this room come together. So first of all, we're gonna cut the sill to size. So every time you order a window, the sill is usually slightly larger. So just gonna use a hacksaw, cut it to size, and then put the stoppers on either side. Just getting the seal to the right level, so it's perfectly straight. The cheese. Now where we've got the door where we want it to be, we're gonna start putting holes either side of the door to lock it into the brickwork behind it. So what we're using here, we're gonna use a uh, metal drill, make a small hole through the frame. Once it's through, make a bigger hole, and then we're gonna use a masonry drill to drill through into the bricks. And then we'll finally use our window anchors, which is basically a screw and a massive raw plug 
to go into both the frame and the brickwork and that will attach the door in place. So we're going to use four window anchors either side of the door. The recommended max allowance is about 700 mil. Uh, the door height is 2.1 so we're just going to put four in just to be extra safe. So it's a couple of days later um, and we weren't able to finish the task on the weekend because the sill, this thing, was really big. We could just not work out how, how it went into the window. So I called up the supplier, they told me to get one of these. It's called, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but basically it just really helped push the sill into position. Uh, I've tested it already, worked fine, uh, and has made the job a lot easier using one of these. going on I will um, talk to you up here so that is it the back doors are in they look unbelievable I mean right now it's a little bit of a diamond in the rough situation they look great but everything around them the kitchen the back garden looks utterly horrific but uh, I can see the potential and that's good it just lets so much more light into the kitchen because we have a self-facing garden you can just see that light kind of travel along the kitchen throughout the day which I love even outside the black kind of crystal style matching the black windows above in the loft and the window that we changed in the bathroom looks amazing we will be getting the whole back of the house rendered um, I know that we painted it last summer but it's just not the finish we're looking for um, and our plasterer does actually do outdoor rendering and he's great so we're going to get him in in the summer but that's not a priority at all however it's good to know that that's going to look good as well also an unexpected perk but one that is actually a really big deal and so so great to see is that now when you come through our front door which always has been and still is very dark you're actually getting the light from the bathroom upstairs and the light from the kitchen coming through which is really cool it makes it feel a lot lighter um, or at least makes the house feel a lot more inviting so that's pretty cool i think also once we change our front door from the current blue front door to a front door that has glass panels that in combination with the two back windows coming through means we should get a pretty good amount of light the reason that we did the back door now is because it means knocking out bricks and making a mess and all of that stuff so we just thought better for the lounge and dining room not to get the floor laid and uh, the nice walls painted just for them to get dusty and horrible again so next up we wait for our kitchen to come. While we wait for our kitchen to come, we clear the entire back garden. We clear the entire lounge and dining room. We are really, truly clearing house. It's going to be a blank canvas by the time we're done. And then the priority will be laying the floor, getting the lounge and dining room done. That will take, you know, about a month. By then, our kitchen will be delivered. Our kitchen then gets installed. And then as the weather has warmed up, you know, we'll be in April, May time, we get cracking on the back garden. So, super exciting. I hope you've loved seeing the back doors as much as we have. I have been loving these kind of heritage style doors for so many years now that actually being able to have them in my house is really, really, really cool. Um, and I can't wait to have those open on a warm summer's day, be cooking in the kitchen, having friends in the garden. I can taste what our life is going to look like after this. And it's really, really cool. It's these very small ones that I think you have to hold on to because my God, can the other times be a little bit harder to deal with. So. Spirits are high, feeling really good. Thank you as always for watching. That is us for this week. I cannot wait to get back to the lounge and dining room, which will be happening next week. Thank you as always for supporting. If you are not subscribed and you would like to see the downstairs come together, please hit the subscribe button. We upload videos every single Wednesday. And uh, speaking of Wednesdays, I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>